So lots of folks are talking about uh, timelines for AGI or ASI, artificial superintelligence. So AGI loosely defined is basically human expert level at a lot of the main fields of pursuit for humans. And then ASI is what AGI becomes presumably quickly by being able to self-improve. So becoming far superior in intelligence across all these disciplines than humans. When do you think we'll have AGI? Is 2030 a possibility? Uh, there's one other term we should throw in there. I don't know who, who used it first. Maybe Karpati did AJI. Have you, have you heard AJI, mm-hmm. the artificial jagged intelligence? Sometimes feels that way, right? Both there are progress and you see what they can do. And then like you can trivially find they make numeric letters or like, you know, counting R's in strawberry or something which seems to trip up most models or whatever it is, right? So uh, so maybe we should throw that term in there. I, I feel like we are in the AJI phase where like dramatic progress, some things don't work well, but overall, you know, you're seeing uh, lots of progress. But if your question is, will, will it happen by 2030? Look, we constantly move the line of what it means to be AGI. There are moments today, you know, like sitting in a Waymo in a San Francisco street with all the crowds and the people and kind of work its way through. I see glimpses of it there. The car is sometimes kind of impatient, trying to work its way uh, using Astra, like in Gemini Live or seeing, uh, you know, asking questions about the world. What's this skinny building doing in my neighborhood? It's a street light, not a building. You, you see glimpses. That's why I use the word AJI, because then you see stuff which obviously, you know, we are far from AGI too. So you have both experiences simultaneously happening to you. I'll answer your question, but I'll also throw out this. I almost feel the term doesn't matter. What I know is by 2030, there'll be such dramatic progress. We'll be dealing with the consequences of that progress, both the positives, uh, both the positive externalities and the negative externalities that come with it in a big way by 2030. So that I strongly feel, right? Whatever we may be arguing about the term, or maybe Gemini can answer what that moment is in time in 2030. But I think the progress will be dramatic, right? So that I believe in. Will the AI think it has reached AGI by 2030? I would say we will just fall short of that timeline, right? So I think it'll take a bit longer. It's amazing in the early days of Google DeepMind in 2010, they talked about a 20 year time frame to achieve uh, AGI, so which is which is kind of fascinating to see. But you know, I for me the whole thing, seeing what Google Brain did in 2012, and when we acquired DeepMind in 2014, uh, right close to where we are sitting in 2012, you know, Jeff Dean showed the image of when the neural networks could recognize uh, a picture of a cat, right, and identify it. You know, this is the early versions of Brain, right, and so. You know, we all talked about a couple of decades. I don't think we'll quite get there by 2030. So my sense is it's slightly after that. But I, I would stress it doesn't matter like what that definition is because you will have mind-blowing progress on many dimensions. Maybe AI can create videos. We have to figure out as a society, how do we, we need some system by which we all agree that this is AI generated and we have to disclose it in a certain way because how do you distinguish reality otherwise? Yeah, there's so many interesting things you said. So first of all, just looking back at this recent, now feels like distant history uh, with Google Brain. I mean, that was before TensorFlow, before TensorFlow was made public and open sourced. So the tooling matters too, combined with GitHub ability to share code. Then you have the ideas of attention transformers and the diffusion now, and then there might be a new idea that seems simple in retrospect, but it will change everything. And that could be the post-training, the inference time innovations. And I think Shad Cien tweeted that Google is just one great UI from completely winning the AI race. <laughs> Meaning like UI is a huge part of it. Like how that intelligence, uh, uh, I think Logan Co-Project likes to talk about this right now. It's an LLM, but it become like, when is it going to become a system where you're sh- talking about shipping systems versus shipping the particular model? Yeah, it, that matters too, how the system is um, manifest itself and how it presents itself to the world. That really, really matters. Oh, hugely so. There are simple UI innovations which have changed the world, right? And uh, 
I absolutely think so. Uh, we will see a lot more progress in the next couple of years. Is I think AI itself uh, on a self-improving track for UI itself. Like you know, today yes. Yes. we are like constraining the models. The models can't quite express themselves in terms of the UI to mm -hmm. to people. Um, but that is uh, like you know, if you think about it, we've mm -hmm. kind of boxed them in that way. But given these models can code. Uh, you know, they should be able to write the best interfaces to express their ideas mm -hmm. over time, right? That is an incredible idea. So their API is already open. So you can, you can create a really nice agentic system that continuously improves the way you can be talking to an AI. Yeah. But it, a lot of that is in the interface. And then, of course, the incredible multimodal aspect of the interface that Google's been pushing. These models are natively multimodal. They can easily take content from any format, put it in any format. They can write a good user interface. Mm -hmm. They probably understand your preferences better than over time. Like, you know, and so, so all this is like the evolution ahead, right? And so um, that goes back to where we started the conversation. I, uh, like, I think there'll be dramatic evolutions in the years ahead. Maybe one more kitchen question. Uh, this e even further ridiculous concept of P doom. So the philosophically minded folks in the AI community think about the probability that AGI and then ASI might destroy all of human civilization. I would say my P doom is about 10%. Do you ever think about this kind of long-term threat of ASI? And what would your P doom be? Look, I mean, for sure. Look, I've uh, both been uh, very excited about AI, uh, but I've always felt uh, this is a technology, you know, we have to actively think about the risks and work very, very hard to harness it in a way that it, it all works out well. Um, on the P Doom question, look, it's, a, you know, wouldn't surprise you to say that's probably another micro kitchen conversation that pops up once in a while, right? And given how powerful the technology is, maybe stepping back, you know, when you're running a large organization, if you can kind of align the incentives of the organization, you can achieve pretty much anything, right? Like, you know, if you can get kind of people all marching in towards like a goal uh, in a very focused way, in a mission-driven way, you can pretty much achieve anything. But it's very tough to organize all of humanity that way. But I think if p is actually high, at some point, all of humanity is like aligned in making sure that's not the case, right? And so we'll actually make more progress against it, I think. So the irony is, so there is a, self-modulating aspect there. Like I think if humanity collectively puts their mind to solving a problem, whatever it is, I think we can get there. So because of that, you know, I, 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 I think I'm optimistic on the P doom scenarios, but that doesn't mean, I think the underlying risk is actually pretty high, but I'm, uh, you know, I have a lot of faith in humanity kind of rising up to the, to meet that moment. That's really, really well put. I mean, as the threat becomes more concrete and real, humans do really come together and get their shit together. Well, the other thing I think people don't often talk about is probability of doom without AI. So there's all these other ways that humans can destroy themselves. And it's very possible, at least I believe so, that AI will help us become smarter, kinder to each other, uh, more efficient, uh, it, it'll help more parts of the world flourish where it would be less resource constrained, which is often the source of military conflict and tensions and so on. So we ha also have to load into that, what's the P-Doom without AI? With AI, P-Doom with AI and P-Doom without AI. Because it's very possible that AI will be the thing that saves us, saves human civilizations from all the other threats. I agree with you. I think, I think it's insightful. Uh, look, I felt like to make progress on some of the toughest problems, it would be good to have AI like pair helping you, right? And, and like, you know, so uh, that resonates with me for sure, yeah.